Hey guys, welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. Uh, Maya here again, and this is going to be our Mondays with Maya video. Now today, I actually don't have anything technical or project-wise, review-wise to kind of go over. Um, we've been getting ready to head out of town for the HOA conference. Um, today, it's just been kind of a restful afternoon. Uh, we went to church and then came home and just uh, honestly, me and Jessica have just been just relaxing for the for most of the day and it's nice and it's good uh it's good to rest you know i've missed a couple of mondays and you know even though i don't have anything particular to talk about i did just want to take you guys around we're gonna feed everything uh, just put eyes on it and see how everyone's doing it looks like it's about to rain it can feel it the fall weather it feels like it's finally shifted in it's nice that the weather's shifting because you know we do have some things we want to get uh, squared away before it starts getting cold and and too dark too early I think that you know, the shift in weather is really going to help us to put some periods and some punctuation on things that we've been working towards. I can start to feel the wind picking up, so we better get these animals fed. And I've actually got tools I need to get put up out of the rain before the rain comes. So let's get to it. As it goes usually out here, as soon as the turn of the four-wheeler motor starts, this guy's here, this guy's here, and soon after that, she'll follow. So now we turn this into a family affair. There's Toby. Well, with Maya and company, right? Yeah. So, which I'm not complaining. I like doing it together more than doing it alone. I'm trying to figure out if Clover is pregnant. So I was actually just looking at a photo that I sent to Amy months ago, which Amy is my cousin, and that is where my La Manchas came from. Amy had La Manchas, and when she decided to get out of goats, she just had a couple of, left, of them left that were like her babies. And Clover was a bottle baby that Amy had bottle raised like five years ago. So I sent her this picture of Clover's udder and I was trying to compare them to see. It definitely looks bigger now, don't you think? Let's see if she'll cooperate. Okay, that so looks now bigger. Versus, versus that. It looks bigger, don't you think? It looks more filled out, yeah. <laughs> this is the only time it's okay to video the goat's backside and it not be weird. I told them that homesteading means you spend a lot of time looking at goats back. Well, I mean, you remember me explaining to Toby that a lot of times in animal husbandry, you're looking at poops and urines and... Yeah. Well, okay. So, basically, we had a buck that was in here with his mom, and he was only four months old. That is old enough for them to breed. And I didn't think anything of it until I started noticing that some of the girls looked pregnant. Now we didn't do any sort of intentional breeding, but now they sh they should have kitted within the next week if they're going to. And I don't think any of them seem that close, so maybe they're not. Honestly, I am a little disappointed if they're not. I really <laughs> wanted baby goats. Well, partially disappointed. Partially. Because... No, I'm actually disappointed. Well, haven't we been on the hunt for something that would mean we have we have been looking for bucks which meant which would mean intentional breeding but then we wouldn't have babies for another five months yeah but then they and be... i want babies now <laughs> <laughs> well, i guess we'll have to swing by the piglets it would appear that your fence is breached 
It's incomplete. It's what I think is going on. You think what? It's incomplete. I think they're getting out down at the end. Oh. It's like, how did all these get out anyways? They, have, <laughs> they haven't gotten out yet this entire time. And now there's like a bunch of them. Come on. Good thing your feed bucket brings all the girls to the yard. <laughs> it's not weather and it's not light. You want to check them? I think it's probably mites. Hold on, let me finish my hibiscus tea before I get all up in their backs. <laughs> this is cool. All right. Oh, you yeah. So mites and our chicken keeping experience is one of the top culprits if your birds are not laying. Uh, more often than anything else, that's what it is. Um, if, if, if it's not like the molt or really, really hot weather or really short days will do it sometimes too. Well, and the reason we didn't check for mites earlier is because they molted. And it was 105 it was degrees. 105 degrees, so we're like, well, that must be it. So I'm just going to talk to you like you don't know anything about chicken. So um, some of you are new to this. So whenever you pull chickens' feathers back, you can see their skin like this. And now the thing with mites is, is they're going to be right up on the skin at the, the base of these shafts of their feathers. And usually you want to check kind of around their backsides. But the thing is, the mites are going to scatter, so you, you might have to search for them. A little bit and it's gonna be really hard to catch on camera if we do have them she's still growing back a lot of her feathers a lot of these shafts are empty yeah well maybe it's possibly still the end of the molt because all the red ones molted and then some of the other ones did now mites are like a little red usually the red bugs I think I've seen them be white before but they're just tiny little bugs and they'll be crawling on their skin right at the base of their feathers and obviously she's not upset. I'm holding her upside down. I've got her feathers. If you do have a chicken that's really unruly, you can hold them completely upside down. And whenever the, <laughs> the blood rushes to their head and they chill out and they're not upset, you want to be gentle with them. You're not, this isn't mean, um, but this will usually keep them pretty docile if you have someone that's difficult. And if you have a hard time catching them, come in at night when they're roosting. Okay, I don't see anything on her, but I'm going to check uh, some of the other ones. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, they're still missing a lot of their feathers. So you think it's just the end of the molt then? They haven't really recovered? The, it may just be the end of the molt. I don't see any mites on them. That's good. Mommy, yeah. can you try to catch that one for me? Yeah, you can hold this one. Why was that one? Oh, I don't know if I can catch her. She's fast. <laughs> I knew it did! Mommy, I got one! Oh, you did. <laughs> Be gentle with okay, her, Okay, put her back down so she can eat. Good catching. Good catching. Put her down. Gently. Thank you. Good okay. job. No mites. Uh, however, I noticed and just kind of giving them a look through that they are growing back a lot of their feathers. And so I feel pretty confident that the reason they're not laying is just because they're in the middle of molting. And I bet they'll pick back up here pretty soon. Hey, go open the date, date for daddy. Go on. Go open it. Hey, Bill. Hey, you want to come take a quick peek at the uh, piggies? Look at that rainstorm coming. Let's get back there and say hi to him real quick. Come on. There's like a massive uh, rain, rain cloud coming this way, which means Maya is going to finish um, doing what he needs to do. And I'm going to take you guys back here to see the pigs so we can actually see them. All right. Did you find the babies? Huh? Where are the babies? So probably down by the house with the weather coming in. Uh -huh. Come on. I'm guessing they're down here in the house because it's getting kind of late. 
<gasps> yep, there they are. Hey guys. Hey, hey little dudes. Hello. Oh, they're scared. It's okay. They're okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't try to get one. They've gotten so much bigger. No, I don't want to try to get one. I don't want to scare them. Why? We don't want to make them feel nervous. We want to make them feel safe. Hey little guys. All right, let's let them, let's let them have some space. Say bye little people. Good night. Hey mommy. Good night. They're so cute. They are about to start getting some food and a creep feeder, which we'll show that to you guys whenever we do it. There's the little house for them, which that should be done tomorrow, I believe. Well, as you can tell, it is the next morning. Uh, and man, fall came in quick and with a vengeance. I came out this morning in a tank top and I immediately had to go back inside and put on a long sleeve. It's fall is here for sure. I think the high today was only 72. So I'm excited. Uh, you know, every time seasons come, by the time they're leaving, I'm ready for them to leave and ready for the next one to come. So I'm excited about fall. Oh, that's a nice cool breeze. A couple of things happened yesterday. One good, one not so good. So it rained like crazy and it will rain like really hard for a few hours for sure lots of thunder and lightning if anyone was on the live video they saw we actually had to cut it short by about 10 minutes because uh the internet started to go out and that was uh, mostly due to uh, the weather um so the good thing is the roof which is not fully done but it's mostly done did not leak at all and so that was good so we've done a good job ben turns done a good job and hopefully today because we've got good weather for the next few days we'll get that finished up the bad thing is uh i said yesterday that i had to get all the animals fed and that i had a bunch of tools sitting out that i need to get put up i actually did get the tools uh put into my box the bad thing is is that in my rush to get inside after getting the tools put into the box i left the lid open as you see it and so all night the rain poured in on all my tools that i had out here which it's not all my tools but all the tools that i was using for this job i don't think you ever really want your tools getting rained on but uh you know this kind of segues into uh something i'm going to talk more about uh in the future videos because um, some people have asked like to kind of review tools that i use why i use them this will kind of give you just like a little preview. You know, I am a Dewalt person. You know, every guy's got their tool brand and they'll swear by them and that's okay. You know, I'm not trying to you know, start an argument or anything, but uh, you know, I've been fairly consistent on which tools I use. I used to do Hitachi um, and there's still some Hitachi things that I have, but I've converted to Dewalt and honestly, I'm, I'm, especially when their 20 volt stuff came out, um, and then they really sealed the deal whenever they, they came out with a 60 volt line of tools and those have just been so impressive um, but one of the things is is uh, you know I've left drills outside uh, in the field out in where I was working on accident in the garden uh, Jessica's actually borrowed a drill before and left it out in the garden and, it, and the thing is is you know you would think oh that's bad because it's electricity uh, but Dewalt's such a solid brand that you, know, you take the battery out you make sure everything's dry um, I've never actually had a Dewalt tool that's gotten wet, uh, break, or stop functioning. And I have had other brands do that to me. And so even though I left my toolbox open and the whole point of putting everything in the toolbox is to keep it out of the weather, uh, I'm fairly confident that there will not be any side effects because um, we've actually got, me and Ben, or actually have them unloaded or drying them with towels. Uh, go ahead we put a fan on them uh, that's also something you can do if like you get your tools wet pull the batteries pull everything that's, le that's electrical and set up a fan because air will dry water in cracks and crevices that towels and stuff can't get to and so we'll set them up under a fan for a little bit and honestly i'm fairly certain that they will all still be functioning just fine it does suck though because you know there's probably some damage even if it's still functioning you know I kind of view it like this, you know, it might take off a couple of years of its longevity for getting that wet. Uh, and it may not. I mean, honestly, I've gotten, like I said, I've left drills outside and I'm still using those and it's four years later. So we'll just see what happens. But I felt really stupid for rushing out here and getting everything put up only to leave the door open and let everything still get rained on. Anyway, so enough about tools. Uh, last night as we were, I was coming through out that, we were just going to go around and feed the animals then. 
Jessica came out and all the kids came out and things took a different direction, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off. So we're about to leave for HOA. And one of the things I want to get done before we go is this uh, pig housing, this pig barn that I've got framed. I actually did all the framing myself. I didn't have to have any help, um, which I felt like was a big accomplishment for me because I always had to have one of my brothers come in and help me do all the rafters and stuff. But as you can see, it's all done. Uh, essentially, this is going to be two compartments. This kind of, uh, this beam right here will separate them. And this will have two separate barns that will be essentially three and a half sided. And then we're going to run uh, hog panels around the front to kind of give them a yard. And essentially we're going to put the mom that has not had her piglets yet in one side. And we're going to move the mom that has had her piglets into the other side until they're ready to wean. And that way we can move them off of her and leave her in there until they're weaned off. So we definitely want to get that buttoned up today. And one of the reasons why I'm not doing the, that right now is because the tools that I was using to do that are the ones that are drying off. So while the tools are drying, um, I think I'm going to go out and spend some time with our horses. I thought it might be a good idea to have you guys come along with us. So this is Luke. This is Jessica's horse. He's an American uh, paint quarter horse. He's the master of the pasture as we call it and he's also the oldest i think he's probably 13 or 14 now that's cyrus he is a leopard appaloosa he's our youngest horse i'm pretty sure he's about nine years old now because we've had him for a few years and uh he's our best round penner um, he responds what uh he responds the most to uh, the training methods that we're using um, partially because he probably hasn't been trained in the wrong way um, he was kind of a blank slate being a blank slate is good because you know we can teach them what we want we don't have to unteach bad stuff but it's also uh can be risky because he doesn't know how to behave like under a saddle and different things like that and so he's the only one that hasn't ever had a saddle on him um but i believe that we'll get there uh like i said he he responds so well to our training methods that I don't think that he'll have any problems with that. But uh, one thing about Cyrus is that uh, his gait is one of the prettiest. He's still a quarter horse, but he just prances a lot. He kind of kicks his tail up and picks his feet up real high. So he's not like a walker, um, but when he does get going, he's it's really, uh, it's really cool to watch. The last horse is Maverick and he's the uh, Chestnut Bay. And honestly, he's, he's pretty broke. He likes to play catch me games whenever it's time to get haltered up for whatever. But once he actually gets uh, haltered, um, he's as broke as broke can be. Uh, he responds pretty well to training, but he doesn't really like going fast. Um, he's my horse, um, partially because I felt like I wanted one that was a little slower. And also he's pretty big and I'm kind of a tall guy. And so uh, he's mine. You know, all of our horses were rescued out of uh, what they call a kill pen you know even though it's illegal to butcher horses in uh, the united states it's not illegal in other countries and so a lot of horses get shipped from america down to mexico for slaughter and uh, what they try to do is they try to find the ones that are uh, trained or had a job before and they try to find them new homes before they get shipped out and so we worked with the rescue uh, to get ours. They were all pretty well trained and had had jobs before. I think Cyrus, like I said, was the one that was the most untrained. I've always liked the fact that uh, we rescued our horses and didn't just buy them. Um, I felt like, you know, we kind of saved their lives from something. And so uh, it's probably, it, it is something I would like to do more in the future um, as we get more space. Um, I would like to be able to rescue more solid horses out of uh, the kill pens. I'm gonna let them back out into the pasture. <laughs> oh man. There they go. So guys, this is where we're gonna part ways. I've got a ton to do to get ready to leave for the HOA conference. I'm looking forward and uh, I know Jessica is as well to seeing everybody and meeting everyone. So I'm gonna head back over to the house. Uh, me and Ben have got some work to do before we leave and he's gonna be staying here while we're gone. So until next time, guys, we bless you.